Um, my name is Melissa and you're all very, very welcome to our very first natural hair talk on Zoom during lockdown. Um, I'll introduce our two guests. We have Kimberly Flood and Joe Richards, hailing from Derby. Welcome ladies, our resident natural hair care experts. Um, we're really glad to have you all with us and um, great to have this community just to talk and share um, our natural hair, our woes, our joys, our experiences um, and primarily it will be Kim and Joe sharing their experiences, their hair care tips um, to help us all on our journeys. Um, it will be recorded um, for those that haven't perhaps aren't able to, meet, aren't able to join us so we can share this with them um, if you have friends that perhaps would benefit. I'm going to kick off with a word of prayer and then um, we'll get into the details. If you bow your heads with me as we begin. Dear Lord, thank you so much for the privilege of being able to share this space with um, our fellow viewers and uh, people who are interested in natural hair care. Father, I just pray that you'll bless us, help us to appreciate our individual natural beauty and help us to retain all the things that we learn. We can bless and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, um, I will hand over to um, Kim and Joe. There'll, there will be presentations, so um, there'll be a time for questions and answers and engagement. So you're really welcome to add all of your questions into the chat. When we have the question time, then you're very welcome to, you know, unmute yourself and ask it live. That's no problem at all. Um, as they are presenting, we can stay quiet until the end of each presentation, then ask our questions. Anyone that's just joining, we'd love for you to have your video on so you feel like you're real people and present. If you do have um, perhaps uh, a circumstance that isn't conducive to having a video on, that's fine as well, we understand. Um, the reason why this is a really important topic at the moment as we see what's happening in the world around us, um, it can be challenging to, be, to feel like you're beautiful as a black woman in this world, am I right? Anyone agree? Um, and to feel perhaps that your your hair is beautiful, to feel like it's um, valued and that in its natural state that it's okay. Um, so we'll be learning a bit more about how to look after it today from both Kim and Jo. Um, and I'll hand it over to them now. Okay, thanks Mel. Um, thank you for um, inviting us to talk about this topic today. And thank you to everyone who's joined. I hope you can all hear me properly. Uh, just wave or whatever if I need to get a bit closer to my mic. Um, but yeah, um, Mal is quite right. Um, in today's society, it's quite important for us as black women to see ourselves as beautiful, as worthy, just as we are. Um, over centuries, we've been kind of fed lies and misconceptions really about our hair in particular. Um, we've been told that straighter hair is better and there was that pressure of um, keeping your hair straight whether by using a relaxer or by straightening your hair all the time um, we've been told that your hair you only have good hair if you've got looser curls or if you're mixed with something other than black um, and, and really all hair is beautiful because it's all ours and god made everyone different um, and I think we really have to celebrate diversity and variety in this day and age as well. Um, just imagine if everybody looked the same, everybody had the same hair, same skin tone, same height, same weight, you know, what would life be like? It would be completely weird. Um, and also, I think we've also been told this misconception that black hair doesn't grow or doesn't grow well, um, which... I hope that people are understanding now is just not true. Um, but there is a point that we cannot look after our hair the same as those with straight hair. If you think about um, plants, and you'll probably hear the plant analogy quite a bit today. Um, if you think about plants, all different plants require different conditions. Um, some need more light than others. Some need more water, more regular, regular watering than others. Um, if you look after all plants the same, then they're all going to thrive. And so it's the same with, or similar with hair care. Um, as black women with curls and kinks and coils, 
we need to look after our hair slightly differently to somebody with straight hair and that's really what we're going to be looking at today and Joe's, Joe as well is going to be looking at that as well um, but you know what I'm really happy about this natural hair movement or you could say trend as well that's been going on for the last maybe seven to ten years um, it's telling us that our hair is um, fashionable and that it's appropriate but it always has been fashionable and appropriate it just hasn't been accepted as that until now uh, or recently um, but you know if um, others are struggling with that idea I hope that this can help um, help us kind of come around to the idea to accept who we are love who we are and what we've got and to be able to care for it properly as well so yeah um, I'm going to be sharing my presentation um, but also whenever I close it if you put it to speak of you when it comes to demonstrations and things like that you can probably see a little bit easier okay so I'm going to be starting off um, with my hair journey and then I'm going to hand over to Joe, who will be talking a little bit about hair science and then we'll come back to me and we'll be talking about actual hair care and how to enable our hair to thrive and to grow as well as black women. So I'll just share my screen with you. Okay. So natural hair care. Can you all see that okay? Fantastic. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about my hair journey, first of all. Um, what I learned, and as I said, we'll go over to Joe, and then we'll discuss tips and tricks, hair products, and take some questions as well. So get your questions ready. Um, if you would like to um, ask a question, if you just go to the chat at the bottom and write it in there, we can get to that at the appointed time or Melissa will ask that question because we might not see everybody's hands as we go throughout the presentation okay so uh, my hair journey so a bit of background um, I've always had natural hair I haven't um, relaxed it in my lifetime um, but not to say that I had always looked after my hair how I should have um, typically I always kind of kept it straightened um, whenever it was washed, blow dry, straighten, wash, blow dry, straighten. Um, and that was just, uh, I guess, the pattern and the standard of how I did it. It was just, that's, that's the thing to do. Um, my hair did grow well, but it didn't really get past a certain length ever. Like it would get maybe a couple of inches past my neck. Um, and then it would kind of plateau, wouldn't get any longer, but I could tell my hair was growing from the roots. So we're going to talk a little bit about why that was later on. So that was basically life up till about the age of, let's say, 24-ish. But anyway, I, as I said, my hair was always natural. Then um, I used to cut it a lot. Well, a few times in life I cut it and that was just because um, of the awkward length that I had <laughs> and I felt like I couldn't really do styles that I wanted to. I was like, oh, this is boring. 2008, I cut my hair um, when I was at uni. 2009, I cut it again. It grew out a bit and then I cut it again in 2013, thereabouts. Um, so yeah, it's not like my hair has always been long. Um, there have been times where I shortened it just to, to be a bit different, have, you know, a different look and um, yeah, kind of fed up with the awkward length that it would always stay at. Then I started my locks, my locked journey. Um, I locked my hair, I think it was late 2013. Um, I was loving life, locked it and it was really easy to look after. Um, I liked it because it was low maintenance, um, it still allowed me to keep my hair natural and it grew quite well um, and as you can see I coloured it and everything because, <laughs> because I knew I wasn't really going to see the effects of any damage or anything so yeah that's what I did, coloured it, uh, bleached it, coloured it, um, styled it, it was really easy to just get up in the morning, throw a bubble in, go to work, no faff no plaiting none of that nonsense <laughs> and um yeah 
it was really easy. Um, then I did something that people don't usually do or sometimes think you can't do, and I undid my locks. Um, and that was because, well, I, was, I intended to have my locks forever. Um, I really enjoyed them. Um, but one day I undid one of my locks and I realized how much it had grown. If you remember 2013, I had cut my hair and so it wasn't very long at the back and that's how it got to just past my shoulder. Um, and so I was like, oh, if I undo all of my locks, I won't have this awkward length anymore. I could enjoy all these styles. You know, so I was like, yeah, and I kind of missed, because I undid that one, I kind of missed my hair being loose, you know, sleek styles and all that stuff. So I undid them all, and it was not a quick process. Um, I would say each lock to be undone was on average about 30 minutes each, and so I did it over a few months. So yeah, that was my uh, hair journey, I would say, up until... I really started to care for my hair. And so I'm gonna pause there and we're gonna hear a little bit about um, hair science and Jo's experience and her hair journey and what she's learnt um, on this road as well. And then we'll come back and see what I've learnt. Well, thanks, Kim. Um, okay, I'm just gonna share my screen. Cool, so um, hi again, guys. My name is Jo Richards and um, Today, I'll be giving you a 101 lesson on the science of hair care. Uh, just a quick disclaimer before I get into it. Um, I'm not a hair care professional on any level, but I do have a genuine interest and passion when it comes to the subject. Um, I'm really curious when it comes to Afro hair and um, why it behaves the way that it does. Um, I've done a lot of research over the past 18 months, just trying to figure out what works for me. And um, I'm just really happy to be able to share with you the knowledge that I've gained and hopefully you find it just as insightful. So um, I'm just going to get right into it. So when it comes to hair care, it's all about understanding your hair needs. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this actually. When um, someone tells you a particular, someone tells you about a particular product or a method that they use and then you do the exact same thing, but you don't get the same result and you're thinking, what did I do wrong? But um, I'm just here to say to you that it's not because you've done anything wrong or there's nothing wrong with your hair. It's just probably that they have a different hair type to you. Um, think of it like plants. There are so many different types, so many different variations. Some thrive in tropical climates, some thrive better underwater or in the desert. Um, some plants even need more nurture than others. Um, so just because they're all plants, it doesn't mean that they need the same conditions to grow. And the same goes for hair. Just because we all have afros, it doesn't mean that we all require the same type of care. And there are so many other factors to consider. Um, you've just got to kind of figure out what works for you, which is why I've basically collated four fundamental points, which are key for hair growth. Um, first one is understanding what your hair needs. Second is providing the right environment. Thirdly, the right nurturing for it to grow. And Fourth, patience, which I think is probably the most important one on that list, um, which leads me on to my personal hair journey. Um, as you can see from the graph, I've had a lot of highs and lows um, when it comes to dealing with my hair. Um, I've got a very similar hair story to Kim, actually. I've always been natural and never really caved into the pressure of relaxing my hair, but little did I know the damage that I was causing from straightening my hair constantly. So I guess I'll start from the beginning. Um, as a kid, my mum would always put my hair in protective styles, like twists, flats. Um, but as I reached my teenage years, that's when I started to become really complacent. I started straightening my hair almost every day. I even remember when my mum bought me my first pair of, pair of hair straighteners. And I would literally use them like sometimes multiple times throughout the day. And um, I'm Jamaican here, so there's a Jamaican proverb that my mum would always say, and um, I'm not going to do it in patchwork because my patchwork is actually terrible, but it basically says it's not the same day that a leaf goes into water that it rots. And it was so true because it wasn't before long that my hair started to fall out in literal clumps. 
So um, basically from that point onwards, um, I was just on the journey basically to restore my hair back to health, which I did through protective styles and extensions. And I did actually notice a huge improvement, but um, like Kim, you know when you just take out one of your extensions and then you realize how long your hair has got? Um, yeah, I kind of fell back into old habits and I started straightening my hair again. Um, and this time people are actually persuading me to straighten my hair because they were like, oh my goodness, it's gonna be this long and like, you should do it. So I did, but um, it didn't take long until I noticed that I was experiencing severe breakage. And straight away, I knew what to do. I put it back into protective styling. And, you know, I was on a good journey and everything seemed to be going great. But um, I kind of self-sabotaged myself. And I went through a stage, basically, of over-moisturizing my hair um, by basically applying water all the time and never allowing it to dry. So I don't know if you guys remember like jerry curls back in the day. Um, I was basically doing that, but with natural hair. Um, I ended up developing high girl fatigue, which is basically when that outer layer of your hair, known as the hair cuticle, becomes damaged because of the constant moisture. So my hair started to feel really mushy. It was really weak and it completely lost its elasticity over time. It was pretty bad. Um, which brings me to today, number 10. So obviously my hair has grown a lot since then and it's definitely come a long way, but it's still nowhere near where I want it to be health-wise. Um, and it was at that point when I started to do intense research and starting to adapt my techniques because clearly I was doing something wrong. So um, I just couldn't seem to maintain the length at all. And that's pretty much where I'm at now. I do have a few pictures on my next slide. Um, and this is just my hair over the past five years, I'd say. Um, on the far left, that was my peak. Uh, my hair was absolutely flourishing. It was thick, it was full of volume. Um, from the middle upwards, um, you can see that's where I started to straighten my hair. And I did notice that the more I straightened it, the thinner it became each time I did it. And then eventually I started to notice that the edges on the hair were getting really sparse. Um, that's why I put a little red triangle there. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it wasn't looking good. And then from that moment, started doing protective styling. At the bottom, from the middle at the bottom, going upwards, that's when I started to go through my high goal fatigue stage, unknowingly at the time. And then you can see in the next picture where my hair pretty much lost all its body. It was very limp and it pretty much halved in volume. Um, there was a big difference to how it was in the first pictures. Um, and the last two pictures I've added, um, they were taken quite recently actually. So the bottom one was taken in November 2019, so last year. And as you can see, the length was there, but it was so damaged. Um, so from that point, I actually haven't put any more heat on my hair. I haven't blow dried and I haven't straightened at all. So I'm quite proud of that. And the picture above, that was taken in April this year after washing my hair. So you can definitely see a big difference from my hair after washing in that picture compared to the one where I'm in that yellow top. Um, so yeah, basically the reason why I felt I wanted to share that with you is because I wanted you to see that my hair journey hasn't been plain sailing at all. There's been a lot of ups and downs and struggles along the way. And I'm sure a lot of you guys listening today can probably relate to that. But um, hopefully the tips that I share today can reinvigorate your spirit and you can start to learn better ways of caring for your hair and um, really start to love and appreciate your natural hair. So I'm gonna get right into step number one, which is get to know your hair. Um, it's also known as hair evaluation, which is what I call it. And um, where I would start is basically looking at the texture of your hair. So for black girls, we usually fall within the bracket of 3A to 4C, with 3 being a looser curl pattern and 4 being extremely coily. I actually have a picture on my next slide just to demonstrate that. Um, so if you look closely at your hair strands, you'll be able to see which curl pattern best resembles your hair. Like obviously for me, mine's a one, but um, when my hair is out in its natural state, I'd say I'm around a 4A to 4C. Um, so once you are able to match your hair 
type and your hair pattern, then it's easy to know what kind of methods you need to look after your hair and the type of products that you should be purchasing. Um, it's also possible to have more than one hair type on your head, just to put that out there. Um, for example, you could have looser curls at the front and tighter curls at the back. And also, if you've been straightening your hair a lot, it can also change your hair texture as well. As I'm sure I went to like a 3A at one point just because of the constant straightening. But um, yeah, so definitely figure out your hair texture. Next, I would recommend figuring out your porosity. So for those of you that don't know what porosity is, it's basically how your hair responds to moisture. So I mentioned earlier that the cuticle is the outer layer of your hair. So if we have a close-up view, which I have a picture here, um, we can see that for low porosity hair, the cuticle lies quite flat. For normal hair, it's slightly raised. And for high porosity hair, it's very open. Meaning that when it, it comes into contact with water, for low porosity hair, it's extremely difficult for moisture to penetrate. And it usually bounces right off. Um, for normal hair, it absorbs some moisture and the rest bounces off, which is the ideal, I guess. And for high porosity hair, it absorbs moisture very, very well, but just as quickly as it absorbs the moisture, it can be lost just as quick, basically. So um, there are many techniques out there that you can use to test the porosity of your hair. One technique that I would recommend is trying the float test which is basically where you have a glass of water and you put a strand off your hair inside. And if your hair floats at the top, that means you have low porosity hair because it's not really absorbing the water. Um, and people with low porosity hair usually are protein deficient, well, have protein deficient hair. So you should look for hair products that are high in protein to kind of balance that and counteract that. Um, but I'll get into that later on. Um, so if your hair stays in the middle, you have normal porosity hair. And if it sinks straight to the bottom, that means you have high porosity hair. Um, for the other two points on this slide, I'm not going to go into too much detail because it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, we have length, which is basically, um, I'd say, be observant about the length of your hair. You can easily check whether your hair is growing. Um, density as well, which is basically how thick or thin your hair is, and usually this is determined by genetics. And finally, it's recognizing problem areas. So for me, you saw in my pictures before, um, my problem area was definitely my nape area. Um, for you, it could be a dry scalp, it could be brittle hair, it could be breaking or shedding, or um, even more severe, like complete hair loss. And what I would say is, if you have a problem area, don't ignore it. Try and address it as soon as possible because you don't want the problem to get any worse than it already is, right? So, yeah, so just to round off step number one, it's really important to understand the properties of your hair so that you can make better decisions when choosing products and you can take meaningful action to address any issues, which leads to my next step, take action. So my first point of action would be to address the damage. Um, using myself as an example, I mentioned about my edges, that they were quite sparse, they were weak. I wasn't really seeing much signs of growth. And I would recommend using less tension hairstyles. Um, so when you're doing your extensions and you're trying to grab your baby hairs in, like just be conscious about that. Um, our natural hair is very delicate, so we need to use a gentle approach. Um, I would personally recommend using Jamaican black castor oil. I actually have some right here. Um, I use this quite regularly. And um, in all the research that I've done, I don't think I've come across any bad reviews per se about this product. Um, it's known for thickening hair and restoring edges, and um, especially when it's massaged into your scalp. Because um, by massaging, it helps to stimulate the hair follicles, which are basically at your roots, and it increases your blood flow. Um, if you're into gels and you want to keep your edges on fleek, um, I would say be conscious when you're looking for gels and try and look for products that are infused with other natural ingredients. For example, it could be infused with 
avocado oil or argan oil. I actually have a gel here as an example. This is a Play and Stay brand gel, and this is infused with argan oil. So there are many others on the market, but just something to take note of, I guess. Um, my second point of action is watch your diet. Um, we all know the quote already, what you put in is what you get out. And if you're feeding your body with trash, you can't expect to get good results on the outside. And that also applies to your hair as well. So I'd recommend having a balanced diet, eating fruits, your vegetables, um, seeds, nuts, just ensuring that you get the right amount of vitamins and minerals, um, specifically vitamins A and E, because they have um, strong links to hair growth and Finally, I added drinking lots of water. We all know the benefits of drinking a lot of water. Um, my final point of action is to know your oils. Um, when it comes to hair, oils can be split into three different categories. So we have light oils, which easily penetrate into your hair cuticle. Um, we have heavy oils, which are good for sealing in moisture. And um, specifically for people with low porosity hair, it's better to stick to lighter oils simply because it's easier for it to be absorbed by the hair cuticle. And um, for heavier oils, that's better suited to people with high porosity hair. And the third category is essential oils. Um, I've listed examples there, as you can see as well, um, like peppermint oil, black seed oil, tea tree oil. Um, they're all very, very good for stimulating the blood flow when it's massaged into your scalp. But just a disclaimer, if you're going to be using those essential oils, um, it's probably best to mix it with other ingredients um, or another oil that's not as potent. Um, yeah, but it's probably better to do that. Um, next step. Oh, sorry, it's not an next step. It's basically an oil chart that I created. Um, and it basically shows all the properties of each of the oils. Um, and if anyone wants me to send them this after the presentation, I'll be happy to do so. And at least you'll be able to make more of an informed decision. And if you have a itchy scalp, you'll know exactly which oil to go for, etc. So that takes me on to my final step, which is wash day. Um, so I'm not going to front. Wash day isn't particularly a day that I look forward to, just because um, I know that my entire weekend is gone when I start doing wash day and do my hair. So um, if you're going to be spending that much time doing your hair, you might as well get the most out of the process. So the first thing that I would recommend is doing a pre-poo. And um, just from speaking to other people, I've noticed that it's not really that common, but um, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it is game changing. And um, I remember messaging him and telling her, like, I'm just trying to pre-poo and it's amazing. And um, for those of you that don't know um, when, like what part in the process you do this, it's basically a step that you do before shampooing your hair. And it's where you treat your hair with oils or a lightweight conditioner. And the purpose of it is just to prevent all the oils from being stripped when you wash your hair and um, all you need to do to make a pre-poo is basically mix a few oils together i listed some on the slide um, you heat it up and distribute it all over your hair from your roots to your ends and completely soak your hair with the oil um, keep it covered for about 30 minutes uh, make sure you do this on detangled hair by the way and um, when you wash it out, you just basically continue with your normal wash day routine. But I'm telling you the benefits, um, basically the benefits of it is that you'll notice that your hair is a lot softer than usual. It's much easier to manage. Um, it'll feel stronger and you'll get minimal breakage. Um, those are the things that I found when I did it for the first time and I was so shocked. Um, I understand that it is an extra step in the process, but it's definitely worth it and I would recommend it personally. Yeah, no, my, all of it. Um, oh, does someone have a question? <laughs> oh, I think someone just forgot to put the mic on mute. Um, other tips I would recommend is a good clarifying shampoo just to remove all the dirt and ensure that your scalp is completely clean. Um, one that I would swear by is the Sheer Moisture Strength. So I've got it right here. Um, the Sheer Moisture Strengthen and Restore shampoo, and it looks like this. And um, I know that sheer moisture products can be quite expensive, but you definitely get value for money because a little goes a long way. Um, I would recommend that for people with low porosity hair because it's a good protein conditioner 
and it's a good way to balance your hair's pH, um, especially if you're suffering with damaged hair. Um, for a few natural alternatives, I would say you can mix egg with oil and honey, and that's just as effective as well. Um, lastly, don't overcomb your hair when it's wet because it is in a fragile state and it's more likely to snap. So um, either try and finger detangle your hair, um, or if you can't resist, if you feel like it takes too long, use a tangle teaser brush. Um, it's less abrasive, and I've noticed a big difference since using it personally. And last but not least, I just wanted to touch on sulfates. So basically, sulfates is what makes shampoos lather or foam up. And the general consensus, as we all know today, is that sulfates are bad. We shouldn't use any products with sulfates in. But um, I just wanted to shed some light on the topic. Um, when it comes to sulfates, it's all about balance. Um, although I wouldn't personally recommend that you go out and buy a sulfate shampoo. Um, if you do happen to have a sulfate shampoo at home, um, try and counteract it with a non-sulfate product. So for example, if you have a sulfate shampoo, use a non-sulfate conditioner and vice versa. If you have a non-sulfate shampoo, then you, you're okay, I guess, to use a sulfate conditioner. But just remember that it's within reason. Um, but I just thought I'd share that point with you. And finally, that brings me on to my final slide. Um, just to wrap up what I shared today, we've learned about the importance of understanding the properties of your hair, identifying and addressing the problem areas, knowing the best products for your hair type, and developing a healthy wash day routine. Um, one thing I did want to add on is don't be afraid to try new things if something isn't working. It does take a lot of trial and error. So just see what works for you and don't be discouraged because we're all in this journey together. Um, and hopefully one day we'll reach a point where we know our hair so well and we'll be able to reach for the right, pro right products at the right time. And um, we'll be all able to achieve healthy natural hair. And that brings me to the end of my presentation. I hope that it was useful for all you guys. Um, and that you had some points that you can take away and hopefully incorporate into your own hair care regime. Um, if there's anyone that has any questions, just leave them in the chat or um, you can even message me directly if you want to. And I'm, I'll be happy to share some of the inf some more information with you because I do have, I've got so much information. I did a lot of research, so I'm always happy to help. And um, that's it. Thank you for listening and I'll take you back, back over to Kim. Thanks very much, Joelle. <laughs> just before you go over to Kim, um, we've had a few questions in the chat and I thought I'd take this moment to ask those questions before we move on to the more practical aspects of hair styling um, and tips and tricks from Kim. So if I just kind of scroll up, um, someone asked a question about um, they've been struggling with their hair and have been keeping it short, um, but they have been noticed that they're noticing that their hairline has been receding. They haven't mentioned anything about use of wigs or anything like that, but can you guys give any tips on how to thicken up um, our hairline or prevent hairlines from being damaged? Yeah, sure. Oh, go <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> um, I was going to suggest um, to restore the thinning edges, you could try using the Jamaican black castor oil. There's also a Jahitian, which is a mix of Jamaican and Haitian um, black castor oil. You can try that. And also you want to think about uh, what you're doing to your edges. I don't know if you are doing any styles that are putting tension on your edges or if you tie a scarf around it too tightly at night or something like that. You may want to think about just kind of letting it be for quite a while until they're restored. You might want to also try um, peppermint oil as well, which stimulates growth. So, yeah, that's what I'd advise on that. Thanks, Kim. Um, one for Joe on um, porosity testing. Um, one, does porosity change? And two, do having does having split ends affect um, the porosity test? So. Um, okay, so yes, your porosity can change because I noticed a change. So before I started doing all that madness with my hair, my hair was pretty much normal porosity. And from doing the over moisturization thing um, that I was doing, my hair completely changed and I started to have high, no, low porosity hair. So my hair was floating at the top when I did that test. It wasn't absorbing any moisture. Um, it was really strange, but I think that if you start working with your hair, um, putting the right products in, and you know, your hair will thank you for it, and you will start to see a difference. Um, the split ends thing, I actually haven't researched that. <laughs> but um, I might have to get back to you. 
I don't think he would. <laughs> I, I don't know. I feel like it may do because um, I guess high porosity hair, if your follicles are raised, if your hair is split, um, I guess it might have a similar effect, mightn't it? But it, it won't. It won't tell you. The split ends may um, prevent you from getting a conclusive result, basically, from the water. I would say. Mm. Maybe. I'll have to get back to you. <laughs> Sounds logical. Anyone else got any questions at this juncture? I've seen a few in the chat. If you. I think, I've, I think I've mentioned all of those so far. Oh, have you? Oh, right. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And press on. Uh, okay, I will do. Uh, can I ask you share? Question? Oh, we've got a question. Is that okay? Yeah, go um, ahead. Yeah. I, I asked. Uh, what did I ask? What, in what state should the, should, should the hair be when you check for the type of hair for C, blah, 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 B, all of those. Oh, I want, it... oh yeah, I was going to say, um, I've always done it in a dry state or as close to my natural state as possible. So I'd say when your hair's dry. Mm -hmm. Thank you. How often should you do um, uh, like the hot oil treatment or the pre-poo? Um, well, I've only recently started doing the pre poo actually, and um, so I wash my hair pretty much once a month. Um, I try not to overwash it, um, and I've done it every. So I've done it twice so far, and I've noticed a drastic difference. Um, I guess it's up to you how often you want to do it, but I haven't noticed any harm or damage for doing it once a month. What yeah. about scalp massages with the oil? How often do you do that? Um, so when I mentioned that, I'm not massaging, I'm not putting oil across my whole scalp. Um, it's because I had a specific issue around my edges. So I would do that um, at least once a day and I just massage it for like a few minutes. Um, yeah. Okay, thanks. That answers your question. <laughs> okay. All right, I'll continue uh, with the presentation um, and where I left off. So. Right, so we got to the point where I now started to um, try and look after my hair. And um, I want to say Melissa <laughs> was at this point in my life when I was like, what on earth am I doing with my hair? Because before I had locks, my hair wasn't as long. So now it was like a sudden increase of lots of hair that I didn't really know how I should be looking after it to retain the length. Um, so. Um, I guess me seeing that increase in growth after taking my locks out brought me to question why did my hair grow so well in the locks and the answer is simple very little manipulation so I wasn't combing my hair I wasn't putting tension on my hair I wasn't brushing it um, so it was kind of just left to grow um, without me um, mechanically manipulating it um, and so I guess that principle I've kind of carried through or tried to carry through because really I'm not perfect with looking after my hair. So don't think I am. Um, it probably would be longer now if I looked after it, how I definitely should be doing it consistently. So, yeah, um, I'm assuming you are joining this um, talk today because you want your hair to be healthy or and or you want your hair to um have a good length or grow really well so i'll be looking at both these things today so how to achieve hair length goals um this is what i'm going to be discussing so keeping your scalp clean minimal manipulation as i said um combing tugging etc um water you definitely need to in, in, um, include water into your hair care regimen and avoiding dryness i'm gonna demonstrate how to well a suggestion on how to moisturize your hair effectively and also you want good circulation to your scalp well to your whole body but since it's about hair on your head to your scalp how to achieve hair health goals so we're still looking at moisture avoiding heat avoiding bleaching um, good circulation again and nutrition okay so first thing your scalp. 
So um, this for me has kind of been a big, probably the one of the biggest changes in terms of how I care for my hair. Um, I think you can probably all relate to growing up and having your hair parted and greased, part it, grease it, until your whole scalp was covered in grease as to not make it get dry um, or an oil or pomade or whatever. Um, I, now what I'm doing is not applying oil generally to my scalp. Um, I wash my hair every two weeks. That's what I suggest. Obviously, it's up to you and how your hair um, behaves in terms of washing and dryness, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, so the reason I wash it every two weeks is to keep my hair follicles clear of any buildup, any oils, um, and also um, a really important thing to regulate the natural secretion of sebum. Um, if you haven't heard of sebum, um, it's a natural oil that your skin produces all over your body. Um, but in we're just thinking about scalps at the moment. And basically, if you don't apply oils to your scalp, your, your skin does it for you. And it's in, I, I really think and have experienced that it's in an amount that is um, optimal for my scalp. Um, and the reason I wash it every two weeks is to then clear it away to start again. And obviously to keep my hair clean too. Um, if you were going to apply this to your regimen, as in not applying oil to your scalp generally, I'm not talking about like if you've got scalp issues, like Joe um, discussed earlier. If you wanted to apply this principle to your hair care regimen, you would still have to make sure that you moisturize your scalp but with water um, every so often. And I'll talk about that a bit later on. Um, so yeah, it keeps your hair follicles nice and clear if you keep your scalp clear. If your follicles are nice and clear and clean, um, it promotes um, good, hair growth because you're not blocking the growth of yeah you're not blocking the follicles there's nothing in the way to obstruct your hair from growing well so um on to water now there's a few ways um that water comes into it um drink it because this is good for your body in general and for your circulation uh spray your hair with it um, or dampen your hands and put it in your hair. I use um, a spray bottle like this because it's really easy um, to distribute it on my hair. Um, yeah, so spray your hair with it um, before you then use other products to moisturize your hair. Um, the, the reason I say that is sometimes if you've had dry hair before and then you apply an oil straight onto your hair, um, you may notice that it's dry and greasy if you know what I mean it doesn't feel nourished it doesn't feel like it's actually moisturized it's just dry and greasy um, your hair actually needs water for the moisture aspect or the hydration aspect um, the things we add on afterwards is really to keep it in or to keep it there so it doesn't dry so quickly um, so yeah spray your hair with water um, I feel like there's questions now raising, ah, my hair's going to shrink. Um, yes, your hair will shrink. <laughs> um, but that is, um, I guess the way I tackle that is by having my hair in a style where it's not going to, it's not all out, basically. It's not going to all shrink up. So normally I would have twists or plaits so that I can get between and spray my scalp and then, um, it's not going to cause that shrinkage to happen. I can just put it in a bun and it will stretch it out again. Um, so yeah, spray your scalp. As I said, it helps to regulate that sebum circulation, helps to keep your scalp clear. Um, and also it just helps to, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, keep your scalp clear. And also if you massage it as well, that's good for your circulation too. Okay. We've got a question here, just to, to pause. We've got a question um, from Grace Kent. Yes, you're gonna have to unmute yourself. You have to unmute. 
or you can type it in the chat, whichever one you prefer. Let me. If you type it in the chat, we can come to it um, afterwards anyway. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll come back to you. Okay. Okay then. So the next point is minimal manipulation. This is this is the biggest. Well, one. Okay. I can't really rate them in terms of hierarchy, but this is a really important one as well. Um, and this is the, the main reason why my hair grew so well in locks, because I wouldn't say that I kept it moisturized very well. Um, I washed it every two weeks and that was it. Um, and I neglected it because it was, it was locked. And after that, I had to nurture it back to health. Um, but yeah, minimal manipulation. So, um, the more you comb and tug and brush your hair, what you're actually doing is causing the ends to break. Um, I remember when I used to have my hair combed when I was younger. <laughs> no shade, but um, <laughs> um, the, 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 the hair that would be in the comb afterwards, I'd be like, what's all this hair there? And the answer was, it's dead hair. <laughs> But <laughs> I really think that could have been minimised. <laughs> um, so yeah, you don't want to comb and brush your hair a lot. Um, back to the plant analogy. Let's say you've got um, a patch of grass um, and you rake it all the time. Say to get leaves out or something, you rake it all the time. You're going to snap the tips off the blades of grass. Now imagine that grass is actually curly like our hair is and you rake that, how much more is it going to break? Because those curls get caught around the teeth of the comb or the bristles in a brush. And over time, you may not notice it, um, you know, first, but over time, the net, you could say net length of your hair starts to decrease or the ends seem thinner than the roots or whatever. So what I recommend doing instead is finger detangling your hair um it, it's obviously a longer process well if you haven't heard of finger detangling it's just a way of using only your hands to detangle your hair to remove knots and get your strands lying in a similar direction rather than combing your hair i don't generally comb my hair unless um I'm going to do something like straighten it, which doesn't happen often, probably like once a year. Um, or if I've for some reason got a lot of lint in the ends of my hair, then I lightly use a comb at the end. I have to do that for my children sometimes because they roll around <laughs> the carpet and stuff and get lots of fluff in their hair. But even for them, I think it's tangled normally. Um, yeah, so that's one way you can um manipulate your hair a lot less that mechanical uh, manipulation secondly um i would say to adopt protective styling techniques into your life protective styling is um it, i'm going to look at a few methods in a moment but it's just a way that you can just leave your hair alone for a while um so that you don't have to keep undoing styling combing brushing tugging whatever um, so I'll come to that in a second, actually. Um, so yeah, again, figure detangling. The positives of it is it reduces breakage, reduces shedding because you're not pulling as much. And it also reduces your split ends because the ends are not being, um, I guess, attacked so much. <laughs> um, say the passing of a brush over your ends can um, promote split ends. Not that it's the main cause of split ends. That would be dryness or um, regular heat usage. So, yeah. Um, and I can also uh, recommend a good um, video to see how you can detangle your hair. It's best to do it while damp because um, there's less friction than if your hair is dry. So, yeah. Um, so, protective styling. Um, if you are looking to grow your hair, you definitely need to incorporate this into your hair care routine. So I'm just looking at long-term protective styling because um, there's also short-term um, protective styling, like putting your hair in a bun. Yes, it protects your ends, but you're going to have to undo that bun when it gets messy. 
and it's not going to be a long time you can keep it in there so um, long-term protective styling so you've got braids or plaques with or without extensions um, same for twists you can use extensions or not um, crochet styles that's where you cane row or plait your hair and then you um, basically loop hair through your cane rows uh, faux locks like bot the bottom right picture I've got there that's my hair in faux locks and actually that's a crochet method I use to install those but as you can see you can't really you can't see my hair because it's inside each lock so my hair was well protected in that style um, weaves as you probably know you probably know what those are and obviously you know what wigs are too um, but that said with methods of protective styling I'm pretty sure we've all had protective styles before but we still haven't seen the length that we would want to and that could be due to um, how you care for your hair during the protective style and also after as well and I'll, I'll look at those next actually um, but with protective styling the best thing to do is choose what is um, convenient and manageable for you if you're not a wig or weave person um, and you prefer twists, do that. If you don't like your hair in your face, you know, have some cane rows or something. Um, so, yeah, so prior to installing your protective style, whatever it is, make sure your hair is clean for obvious reasons. You don't want bacteria growing inside whatever protective style you have. Um, number two, make sure your hair is moisturized. Um, the LCO method I'll talk about in a moment. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you want to start off with your hair at um, the best health it can be because it's going to be left alone for quite a while. Um, you want to make sure it has a good start. Um, make sure your hair is properly detangled um, because when you undo whatever protective style you have, um, it's going to be a little more difficult and you might end up breaking your hair a little bit because um, when you've left your hair for quite a long time, it can mat a little bit depending on what the style is. And you don't want, you don't want it too knotty because you don't want breakage while you're undoing it. So yeah, so that's prior to installing. Um, things to avoid, and I'm sure we've seen this a lot of the time. Um, doing your hair too tight, please don't do it because it's a lot harder to grow or focus your attention on places like your edges after the damage has been done. Um, for some people, it's reversible. For others, it's a real issue that um, is really difficult to reverse. Um, so yeah, when you install protective styles, say if you're if you're if someone's doing your braids for you or cane rows for you or whatever, please tell them don't do it too tight. And if it feels tight, let them know it's too tight right now, loosen this bit and continue, hold it or something as they carry on. It's your hair, it's your edges, um, and you want to keep them. So yeah, if you have too much tension, your roots will be uprooted, um, causing a lot of shedding and thinning at the sides. So yeah, um, don't allow your hair underneath to stay dirty for long periods. You don't want your hair to smell, you don't want bacteria, you want your scalp to be healthy because that's where your hair is growing from. Avoid heavy extensions if possible. Um, now, each to their own, but if your extensions are heavy, that again causes tension and it's harder to sleep with them. So <laughs> it's harder to sleep with them on. So uh, I learned that the hard way. Um, don't leave your ends loose. So the ends of your hair are the oldest parts of your hair. Obviously, they are the ones that that's the part of your hair that left your follicles before the top, obviously. Um, so the older it is, the more it is at risk of drying, um, drying out more or um, becoming brittle. So protect your ends. Uh, make sure if you are plaiting your hair or doing twists and, and it's just your own hair, for example, um, twist to the bottom. Um, do your plaits. Now with plaits, what I actually recommend if you're plaiting your own hair, um, I wouldn't say plait all the way down to the bottom, start to twist it because when you undo them, 
a lot of the time you end up breaking the ends off your hair because it's so hard to undo when it's very fine at the bottom um so yeah and then keep those ends moisturized really well because you don't want them breaking in the wind literally during protective styling um keep your scalp clean as i said try and wash every two weeks if that works for you i try not to go past three just because of the build up that my scalp gets um everybody is different obviously but in terms of my sebum production i feel like it's getting a little bit the <laughs> I'm gonna wash it um, and yeah if you have a protective style where you can continue to keep your hair washed every few weeks that's a win there rather than having to take it out again and install again what you want is minimal manipulation moisturize your hair once it's in a protective style keep it moisturized keep that moisture topped up with a light oil um, if you have moisturized it well before the installation of the protective style um, you can you might just need to top it up especially if you've got extensions or your hair is covered by um, a weave or crochet then do that if it's just your own hair then i would say do the full shebang of moisturization which i'll talk about in a minute in terms of the full shebang um, change any extension hair recommend i recommend every four to six weeks um, but for you see how it's going it depends on your protective style it depends on the build-up um, that might be getting stuck you don't really want to do that um, so yeah that's just a recommendation um, even if you're wearing wigs um, still continue to look after your hair underneath try not to sleep in your wig take it off let you let your scalp breathe um, moisturize your hair at night let it kind of naturally dry a little overnight put your wig on in the morning if you got to go somewhere and lucky for us well in a way it for hair care is lucky that is locked down and we don't really have to go many places so yeah it's a good time to uh protect your style and let it get a little rough looking um so yeah so we're down to um moisture oh i think i've forgotten something actually yeah so after you protect your style that's that's the thing i want to say um when it comes to undoing your protective style take care in undoing it um it would be a shame to grow let's say two centimeters of length and then as you're undoing your hair you have got knots that you're not patient with snap it off get a comb and just be doing that all the way up your hair you're just losing your hair that you've just spent a few weeks growing and so what i would suggest is you use um a light oil i've got a bit of an oil here any oil because it's going to be washed um like olive oil almond oil um just anything to provide some slip to um undo the ends of your hair um in a way that's not going to damage um, your hair or break it off um also when you have undone, undone your hair it might be a good time to do a protein treatment because your hair has been kind of left for quite a while um, so as joe was mentioning earlier you can use a protein conditioner or do an actual protein treatment um, one that i have used before is afro g's um, two minute reconstructor i think it's called um, and it literally you just put it on your hair for two minutes and you do that after you shampoo um, and then your hair kind of you kind of feel the strength revitalize back in your hair again but there's a few other protein treatments you can probably do but for me i don't have the time to do anything long um the two minute one works for me but i wouldn't say do a protein treatment too regularly i would say maybe once every two to three months so yeah i think that's all i have to say on aftercare um yeah so moisture this is the big one really um and i think this is the one we kind of neglect to see the importance of so the more you the more your hair is moisturized the less brittle it is if something is brittle it's easier to break um 
So that's what dryness does. It causes brittle hair and also split ends as well. And also you're more likely to get single strand knots. Um, those are just knots that are in a single strand of your hair, like it's tied around itself and you, <laughs> you can't undo it. <laughs> um, oh, oh, I've got a really good tip for that. And I haven't shared it before, but yeah, I'm going to come back to that. Um, so yeah, uh, avoid dryness completely. Um, this is what I suggest for uh, moisturizing your hair. Melissa said she's tried it and it's working well for her. <laughs> um, so a lot of people say to use what they call the lock method, which is liquid oil conditioner. But what I would suggest um, is to swap that order around and do liquid conditioner oil. So that might that would be water, a leave-in conditioner or a cream of your choice, whatever works for you, and then an oil. Um, if you have high porosity hair, my hair is high porosity, it dries very quickly. Um, I use a sheer butter mix that I whip myself. Actually, I'll show you in a moment, but I need to go and grab it. Um, so the reason I say swap the order around is because um, you, you need um, water first anyway, because that's the hydration part of the process. The, and I would say use the, the leave-in conditioner before the oil because um, oil or many oils are, or all of them really, anything that's a fat or anything is what we call hydrophobic, which means that it doesn't like water, it doesn't bind with water. So if you put an oil on your hair, uh, a water on your hair, then an oil, and then the cream, which is water-based, it won't get through the oil to your hair anyway. So that's why I suggest liquid, then a cream, because that's also water-based, and then your oil or butter. Um, if you have high porosity hair, as I said, it might be a good idea to um, use a butter mixed with other oils. Um, what I used is um, sheer butter, um, and it's mixed with almond oil, olive oil, um, vitamin E oil as well, just for hair health, um, or whatever oils are in my house, including coconut oil, which works for me. Some people, their hair doesn't agree with coconut oil, but, but for me, it works a treat. And what I actually do is whip it. I use my um, electric whip and I whip it all together so that it's really easy to apply. It's very smooth. You don't have like clumps on your hair as you're trying to moisturize it. Um, now, I've also put at the bottom liquid um, and as in water and then an oil sometimes. Like if you have, if your hair texture is low porosity and in the threes in terms of hair texture very loose curl pattern maybe you may not want to go heavy with products um, because it kind of can be a little sticky and weigh down your hair if your hair is thicker and you've got a lot of um you've got coily or kinky hair then um you know you might want to have the leave-in conditioner in there as well so yeah, um, also for low porosity hair, you might have, want to have, as Joe was saying earlier, you may not want to use a butter regularly um, because your hair absorbs, doesn't absorb it as well, doesn't lose it that much. But you know, for high porosity hair, you're going to need that butter to to kind of keep it keep it moisturised. Okay. Uh, oh, go on. I'll leave it then. Okay. <laughs> Oh, that's okay. I was going to say, just as we're kind of wrapping it up, just mindful of time towards quarter past nine. Okay. Um, I just wanted to allow people to ask a few questions. Um, uh -huh. So, I wanted to ask, um, Shine asked, she said, with rice water, does it work? And would you recommend rice water as a protein treatment? Um, <laughs> I feel like the rice water thing is kind of a fad, and I don't. I mean, I know someone who's done it recently and I don't think they saw a difference. I feel like it's more of a, yeah, you can't grow an inch of hair overnight. It's just not going to happen. 
it's just not gonna happen so yeah i wouldn't recommend a rice water i haven't tried it to be honest but from what i've heard it seems like a bit of a mystical thing that doesn't I exist it. <laughs> i tried it yeah it did and it didn't work for me <laughs> <laughs> so, so i can't recommend it <laughs> uh, <laughs> Okay, Auntie Grace, I know you wanted to ask a question earlier, sorry for coming back to you. Yes, um, I, I find my hair is between, because my hairdresser, she said to me, um, you're, um, I'm between a 3, 3 C, mm -hmm. um, and a 3 B. Yeah, I think it's 4 C, 4 B. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 4 C, 4 B maybe. No, she said 3, so I don't know. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, so um, she she also said that, that I can't use like shea butter and you know like heavy oils like um, uh, what do you call it? The, Make black castor oil. Yeah, I can't use that in my hair. So she she gave me um, a, a light oil to use, but I don't find that actually maintain my hair as do you, as well. Do you use a uh, leave-in conditioner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. do, you do you what order do you um, use the products? Well, I mean, I, I wash my hair um, mm -hmm. just with um, um, a conditioner mixed with my um, shampoo, and then I oil my hair. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not really right. So what I would say yeah. is, when your hair is damp, use a leave-in conditioner first, and then the oil. Great. Okay, just continuing then, as looking at a few more questions that were coming through, um, we, you already answered the question on how to make kind of a shea, a shea butter mix, and you mentioned olive oil. What else should you put in there, Kim? Um, so shea butter, olive oil, almond oil, coconut oil if it agrees with you, vitamin E oil. Um, you could use jojoba oil, avocado oil. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. Depends what kind of texture and um, you want the, the butter to be, and also what properties you want for your hair as well. Thank it's you. up to you. Um, Priscilla asks, can you sleep in pre poo, Joe, and um, wash the next day? Does it provide any extra benefits to leave it in overnight? Okay, I, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't actually tried um, leaving it in the night before because just because of the issues I was having with my hair with over moisturizing. So I try to avoid that. But I know people that do and they say that they experience like, softer hair and they've seen benefits of doing it. So um, I just guess it just depends on your preference. I've done it. That's actually how I do it, to be honest. Right. I also use um, like aloe vera from the actual plant. If I had aloe vera juice, I'd do that. But the aloe vera, then the oils. Um, shower cap, head scarf, sleep on it, wash it the next day. Mm -hmm. um, is asking, how would you recommend washing hair when you have braids or extensions in, co-washing or just shampoo? And I guess maybe a little bit about the sebum on the scalp, but you could probably include that again. Right, yeah, I would say still wash your hair if you can every two weeks, three, pushing it, yeah. But um, yeah, I would say to... What I actually do is use, um, get shampoo in, you know, a, a bottle that's got like a small nozzle on it. Mm. So put your shampoo in, get some water in that as well. So it's not as thick, shake it up and then go along your partings that you've got your braids in and then massage it with your fingertips. Don't rub your hair because it's going to get messy. And really your, your hair is kind of protected in the braid anyway. It's not, it's not, it's not nothing to worry about. It's your scalp really. So yeah, if you can get a, a, a bottle with a nozzle so you can get in between just the fingertips, not like not a rough um, movement either. And you rinse it out and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. um, condition. Mm, probably the hair itself but not I wouldn't bother putting it on the scalp um and lastly unless there are any more questions please do bring them through guys um any tips on clipping and trimming the ends of natural hair I need this one right so yeah this is what I was going to talk about I would say trim your hair as it needs it don't get scissor happy um mm -hmm. I was told a myth that if you cut your hair your hair's gonna grow really fast but that makes no sense. <laughs> so um, just 
cut it as it seems like it's getting if your hair is really brittle and damaged then cut it if you've got um single strand knots cut it um there was a time where i had a single strand knot in probably every single strand of my hair and that was probably just from wearing wash and goes for too many days um but there's a way that i now do um cutting out my single strand knots i barely get them now but um what you can do it's probably hard to describe maybe i can just get my hair out this is this is a piece i saved for <laughs> demonstration <laughs> so, <laughs> say say this is your that your hair right and you can feel that there's some single strand knots what i would do is hold the hair like that then pinch it with your nails like this and actually other way pinch it with your nails and then pull here and then the ones that get caught between your nails are going to be the ones with the single strand knots everything else goes through so it's like um a way of kind of filtering you could say so now i've done it i've pulled a lot of my hair through and i've got i found one one single strand knot there um so rather than losing a lot of length you're just dealing with single strand knots without blanket cutting your whole hair so yeah don't cut too often just do it as you need to and lastly how often would you recommend doing a wash and go style and also do you use any specific products when you're doing a wash and go our hair's not kind of the type that you can just wash it and literally go yeah um what i would i would suggest in terms of products for wash and go is um if you're into doing natural things um flaxseed gel so you get flax seeds and maybe just like a tea a tablespoon and you can boil it and what happens is it kind of becomes gel like so you then sieve um the the seeds out so you can use like um the end of some tights or if you've got like a coffee filter thing or tea filter strain or whatever um you can use that kind of that's really the only gel i would use for wash and go i'm not really a wash and go person because I just can't deal with the aftermath, <laughs> to be honest. I, I really don't go for it. I wouldn't say to wear it um, more than two days because you're going to get a lot of tangling and knotting. Um, at night, twist it or put it in a pineapple. Don't just sleep on it just like that because you're asking for trouble when it comes to detangling your hair. If your hair is tightly curled, that is. If you've got like loose curls, it might not be as much as an issue. Um, if you want to use like Eco Styler or something, you can, but that needs that really needs washing out pretty quick. I wouldn't leave that in too long because your hair dries out. Um, so yeah, I haven't tried any other products. I know there are like curling creams and, and such, but or curling custards, but I'm not really a wash and go person. But yeah, that's what I would recommend the, the flaxseed gel. Look on YouTube, it's really, really easy. You're muted, Mel. Chatting to myself. I'll say thank you. Um, do you have any way that we can get in contact with you if we have further questions? In fact, those in the chat, or if you're on mute, you can unmute yourselves. We do want like another episode of natural hair talks to kind of talk more about styling. And um, we haven't really got into that, like what to do with your hair, like. Kim's got a slick bun right now with a random twist in the back. I have, but this is an uh, this is an emergency style. <laughs> I plan to have my hair out, but it just wasn't working. I did want to show you my length, but that's why I've just left out this twist. Put it to um, story. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the um, comment is saying yes, please, definitely for styling ideas. Um, I would like one too. That that sounds good. In fact, well, that I time, need them from you about. <laughs> So maybe we can do another one and we can all share, we can come with our hairs prepared, our hair prepared, and we can share our different styles. Um, but that's great. Thank you so much, Kim and Joe, for sharing. I hope you all learned something. I learned something about the single strand knots because I have so many in my hair. I just ignore them. <laughs> Throw them away. <laughs> Anyone else learn something they want to just share before we wrap up? Um, may I ask a question, please? Yeah. Um, is all this information from research or are you actually hairdressers? So it's mainly from experience and research. Um, we are not hairdressers um, or trichologists. We 
yeah, for myself, it's been experience and research. I think the same for Joe as well. Yeah, because um, I was having problems with my hair. I've tried so many different things, and that's why I thought I need to research for myself to see what works for me. So that's why I was touching a lot on the low porosity hair because that's the type of hair that I have. But um, yeah, just research, looking to try and help myself. That's where I got my information from. There's a really good book that I would recommend called The Science of Black Hair. Mm. And that will support everything that the girls have said this evening. Thanks, Dean. Right, I don't want to, um, to make us too uh, overfilled with so much knowledge and wisdom that we've gained today. Um, we, I'll definitely ask Pastor Ramdin if we can get another session in over the summer months. Um, so look out for that on your socials and whoever shared this with you today. Um, and if you do have questions, I can forward them. Um, if you get in contact with NEC Youth, I can forward them on to the girls. Um, if not, you can contact Kim directly on at pastry88 on Instagram or um, underscore Joe so special underscore um, on Instagram. But yes, I will ask if I can get a slot for styling. But that's just not from the girls. That's from you all sharing your tips and tricks so we can be fabulous and fly together. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you so much, everyone. And uh, have a lovely evening. Thanks, Mel. Thank, thank you, you everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Happy hair health. Thank you. <laughs>